Lou, my black grandson, that's what I call him. He's a great dog, works hard. Lou was one of Ron's last litter of puppies. We start, Ron and I, we started training him right away. He always, you could always tell that he was really, really birdy. Lou is the perfect dog for the way we hunt. Kill him! Now, on the other side of that coin, is Lou also has enough cowboy in him to where if I know where a bird is, he likes to kind of deviate. Lou, my black grandson, that's what I call him. Um, boy, he's a, he's a phenomenal animal. I've had two Labrador Retrievers, three Labrador Retrievers in my life that I've been actually, I actually have been in love with. And Lou is the third one. We had a little puppy named Missy that was me and Tony's dog that died in a house fire. And um, we had Beavis, who was me and Tony's dog, who was probably one of the greatest hunting dogs in the history of this country. And I'm partial to that because everybody's got a great dog says that. He retrieved as many birds as any, 25,000 plus birds. And I have no idea how many birds Lou's retrieved, but Lou's a great citizen. Boy, that's a nice he affair. lives in the house with Andy. He gets fat in the summer every year because he watches cartoons all day long. Uh, he's a great dog, works hard, he's a pervert. It's a shame they never bred him and have never had no offsprings off of him. He's a, he's a very good dog. Uh, Lou is 10 years old, he turned 10. Uh, December, I'd have to look at his papers. I think it's December 8th. Ron pulled me aside. We were out here hunting. It was right around Christmas. And he pulled me aside and he said, hey, I've, I've, I've got something for you. I need to show you something. So he showed me a picture on his phone and he had a shitty Motorola. Like you could barely make out what it was. And it was just like these four little black specks at that time. I'm like, what, what are you showing me? He was not known for his picture taking skills. And he said, I want to give you a puppy. I just had a litter and I'd like for you to have pick of the litter. Hunting season wrapped up first part of February. You know, the Lou was six weeks, seven weeks right around then and uh, went and picked him and uh, he was our first baby. Jesse and I had been married just a little bit over a year. We were still living at the lodge whenever we got him. And we, at that time, uh, we had a dog named Boudreaux that I'd had in high school. He didn't pan out, he was not a hunting dog. Picked Lou up, brought Lou home first part of February. And the skunk house, which is where Jesse and I lived uh, our first couple years of marriage, it's got a bedroom, a living room, and a bathroom. And at the time, the door didn't shut good. The door probably still doesn't shut very good. And it blew open one day. Luckily, Lou was in his crate. Boudreaux ran off, we never saw Boudreaux again. So the joke is that Lou uh, ran away the old dog because he treated him like a jungle gym. He was on top of him. He was nipping at his ears, nipping at his nutsack. I mean, he was a nightmare of a puppy it, to, to Boudreaux. Ron and I, we started training him right away. He always, you could always tell that he was really, really birdy. We didn't, Ron's got, Ron had a saying a long time ago. It's better to have to reel him in than it is to cast him out. And like, that was always the case with Lou always having to, to harness him and, and rein him in. And he was just, he was always, he was easy to train. Uh, he picked up on things pretty quickly. Uh, the, the summer that we trained Lou uh, was one of the best summers of my life because um, we just bought a house. We bought a house, we got Lou in February, March or April, we had bought a house. It was a fixer upper and I am no chip gains. But Ron, had remodeled FHA repossessed homes and he was a painter. 
So we bought this house and it was a dump and and he's not a couple weeks out of off of having his knee replaced and he's climbing ladders and taking down walls and ripping up flooring and I mean he was hard-headed is an understatement about Ron and I think somehow Ron was hard-headed and he was a pervert. Lou is hard-headed and he's a pervert. So I don't know how he did this but there's somehow that Ron passed all of his personalities off onto Lou because Lou will do something I'm just like Jesus Christ he pulled the panties out he pulled Jesse's underwear out of the dirty clothes hamper like or uh, just fucking hard-headed about everything and you know just like getting them up in the in the in the kennel he's just you're like, all right, Lou, we got a kennel. And he will find everything else to do other than hop in the kennel. It was a summer that I, I didn't make any money. And I, you know, all we did was work on the house and train Lou. But I'm telling you what, I, I, I gained more that summer than I have any other summer. And I, I didn't make a single dime. He, he's very, very good with the boys. He's never been aggressive. You know, he's. 90 to 100 pounds depending on the time of year um, built like a Clydesdale and he's got a tail that fucking like Marmaduke and it's like a baseball bat if he really gets excited and starts whipping it uh, so the boys whenever they started to learn to walk they anytime Lou was around it looked like they were going into a fight with Tyson they learned to put their hands up uh, whenever he got to swinging that tail around but other than a couple whips of the tail He's always, he's always been kind of this gentle giant around the boys, so they love him. He sleeps with my oldest every night, Reese. Uh, Reese is eight, and for Reese went through a little, uh, he went through a little uh, monsters under the bed type uh, phase about three or four years ago. So we were like, well, what if Lou sleeps with you? Will that get you out of our hair? And he's like, yeah. So for the past three or four years, Lou's been, he sleeps right on the foot of Reese's bed every night. Lou is the perfect dog for the way we hunt because there's a lot of times we will shoot seven to 12 birds out of a flock and you got to have a dog that's got a little bit of common sense. So if I had to line Lou up for every bird, it wouldn't really, it wouldn't be all that great. I mean, because you, you know, you got to heal them and you got to line them up and you got to send them. Lou's got just enough cowboy in him that if you've got several birds down, he's smart enough that I can just say, back, find the bird, fetch him up. And he'll just, he'll hunt him up, he'll use his nose, he'll use God's tools that he gave to the Labrador uh, retriever, and he'll find what you need. I am Monica Zavala, and I'm from Knox City. I help Michelle uh, in the kitchen and clean rooms, and this is my second year. I'm a stay-at-home mom when I'm not working here. Um, take care of my son. Uh, it's carne con chile and rice. It is, um, I guess you could say it's pork meat, I guess, with some hot sauce and some rice and make some homemade tortillas. Ha 
Let's go. Here. Do it. Back. Hold it. Here. Here. Back. Good boy. Here. Here. Good boy. Here. 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 Drop. And you're busted out. Now. On the other side of that coin is Lou also has enough cowboy in him to where if I know where a bird is, he likes to kind of deviate. Bye. Hey, hey, heel, heel. Heel. Okay, heel. Back. So it's, it's a double-edged sword, you know. I want him to be able to uh, have enough uh, free reign and use his nose and his common sense to because I'm not going to know where every bird's falling but I also you know there's there's a flip side to that is when I know where the bird is and it's three four hundred yards out there I need I just need you to fucking listen to me so it's good and bad but I would I'd rather him be on the side that he is rather than so strict and I've got to line him up for every bird Over, t over the last decade, him and I have learned to work together, so it's, uh, he saved me a lot of steps. So I'll take his stubbornness any day of the week. Back. Fight back. He sees him now. Uh-oh, there he goes. Get him, dog. There you go. Good boy! My favorite retrieves uh, are, of Lou are any time that you start hearing the clients start, you know, thinking, oh, maybe this bird's going to get away, and then he comes back with it. And I always like to kind of give a little chip shot move whenever he gets one of those because 
there's not a scenario out there that he hasn't seen a dozen times. Um, and then another, uh, another one of my favorite retrieves is anytime he finds something that I wasn't expecting. Good boy. Here. Heel. Good boy. Heel. 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 Shot. Dang, this camera's fancy. One, two, three. One, two, three. A good dog never lives long enough, and a dog is always better after he dies than what he really was. I mean, that's the same with Beavis. I don't remember Beavis ever being a bad dog, but there's a lot of shitty days, I'm sure. But then but, that's with Lou. Lou never had a bad day, but he is a really, really good dog and a good hunting dog. And, when, he, when, he, when his last day is up and it's coming in the next couple of years, it's gonna break Andy's heart and Reese, he sleeps with Reese every night and I'm gonna cry my eyes out too. He is inside of him. So I carry, uh, carry several shotgun shells with a boss with Ron in it and then I've got Lou. So constant reminders. He's been gone two years, but he's with us every day. He'll always be the, uh, the dog that started it all for me. And he was Ron's last litter. You know, he was uh, from a puppy. He was one of the, the last dogs. Uh, <clears throat> he, was, he was one of the last dogs that Ron trained. So he's special. Done. Done for the year. You old fart. I sure hope you make it through the summer. We can do it again next year. All right, ready? Ready? Wait. Wait. We're back. Yeah. Sit. Yeah. I'll fucking see that one now. No. No! You asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dog, that's what you mean.